Well, it was an embarrassing loss last weekend, no matter how you look at it, right? You know, we can make any excuses we want. Uh, this went wrong, that went wrong, say whatever we want. Point is, it was uh, you know, a bad loss. It is what it is. We'll see if they can rebound this week as Florida goes on the road to take on South Carolina. We're going to talk about that game and the rest of the games in the SEC coming up in week eight right now. <laughs> Good morning, in that. It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also. And too, we do this video every Tuesday. I run through all the games coming up in the SEC for the weekend, give you a preview and a prediction against the spread. And that's what we're going to do today. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos every single day of the year. Sometimes they're even watchable. Georgia is my favorite team, but I'm a college football fan. I just love talking about college football. Today, we're going to do the SEC. Tomorrow, I'll do all the teams within the top 25. And then on Thursday, I'll have a third preview and prediction video that covers teams that didn't fit into either of the previous two categories. Don't forget about the live show tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. We do that every Tuesday and Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's a call-in show. I take calls from you guys from all over. We talk about college football. We also do that show on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. while we watch college game day out here. All right, let's get into these games. Now, as usual, all the numbers I use in this video, the point spreads, the odds, the over-unders, uh, all that kind of stuff is going to come straight from betnow.eu. And it's accurate as of about 9 a.m. this morning when I pulled the numbers off their website. There's a link in the description of this video. This is the second year in a row I've been lucky enough to work with the good people over at betnow.eu. And if you sign up on betnow.eu using the link down in the description below and enter the promo code Uncle Lou, that's one word, Uncle Lou, They'll give you a 100% bonus on whatever you deposit. So you put $100 in there, you get $200. Put $50 in there, you get $100. Put $500, you get $1,000. You guys get the idea. Uh, I read all the comments on my channel, or at least I try to. Sometimes when the videos get a ton of views like this past weekend, I can't read them all, but I try to read them all. And from the best I can gather from reading comments over the last five or six years on this channel, the vast overwhelming majority of you are absolute experts when it comes to college football. Why not sign up with betnow.eu, put some of that knowledge to work, make yourself some money. All right, here we go. We're going to uh, do it like we always do in chronological order. So all the games are on Saturday this week. We'll start with the noon games and work our way up through the primetime games. All right, coming up first, uh, we got number nine, Florida on the road at South Carolina. This one comes on 12 o'clock on ESPN. Florida, a five and a half point road favorite in this one. Of course, they're six and one. South Carolina, three and three. Uh, opposite stories, of course, for these two teams last weekend. South Carolina got a huge upset win on the road against a top five Georgia team. Florida went on the road to a top five LSU team and lost by 14. Florida, obviously the better team here, at least so far this season. We'll find out in this game if South Carolina has turned some sort of a corner and all of a sudden has become a pretty good team or they caught Georgia at a really good time and just happened to beat them. Some of those questions will be answered. Florida, obviously a pretty good team, already has a win over Auburn, which is a pretty good win. The loss to LSU, not a bad loss. Losing to LSU by 14 at night there like that um, is not the worst thing in the world. And Florida played pretty well for the majority of the game. Offensively, they were able to score uh, and keep pace almost with LSU. It was probably one of the more entertaining games of this past weekend. I'm probably going to go with Florida here in this one. Uh, they say Helensky is going to play this week, the quarterback for South Carolina. Sprained knee from the game last week. And honestly, Will Muschamp ought to have to answer some tough questions about that. I don't know how many of you watched that game. If you're a Georgia or Carolina fan, I know you watched it. But Helensky got hurt in that game long before he got injured in that game and had to come out. And he could barely move. I um, mean, he was on one leg. Um, and he looked really bad. And I kept saying to the people during the live stream, this is criminal here. Will Muschamp ought to take this kid out. He's going to get killed out there. Um, a couple of plays after he got hurt uh, initially, they ran him a, a quarterback sneak with him. And I'm just like, I, you know, if I was this kid's parents, I'd be irate. And then sure enough, in the third quarter, 
ended up getting injured. But apparently it's just a sprain. According to Will Muschamp, they expect him to play this week. I don't know how well he'll be able to move around, though, and I don't think that's uh, a good sign going up against this Florida defensive line that really can get after the quarterback in a serious way. Now, Florida's got some injuries of their own they're dealing with. They had a few heading into the LSU game, and they have a few more now heading out of that game. We'll see how many of those guys are able to go. Even if you like South Carolina a little bit in this game, being at home, you wonder if South Carolina is going to have a little bit of a hangover effect from that big win on the road at Georgia. I know you guys like to clown me and Georgia that you know we're overrated and Georgia's terrible and blah, blah, blah. And Maybe some of that's true, but the point is that was one of the biggest wins South Carolina has had in a very long time. And sometimes we see teams having a hard time putting a big win like that behind them. Five and a half points is less than a touchdown. I look for Florida to rebound after a tough loss on the road last week to LSU. I'm going to take the Gators and lay to five and a half. All right, also at noon, this one's on uh, the SEC Network, Auburn on the road at Arkansas. Arkansas might be the worst team, not just in the SEC, but one of the worst teams in America. Uh, Vandy might have something to say about that too. But of course, Auburn is five and one. Their only loss coming on the road at Florida a couple of weeks ago by a couple of scores. Arkansas uh, is two and four. They're, they're just a horrible team. Now, They've lost their last three in a row, Arkansas has, but all of those games were by one score or less. Auburn's a 19-point road favorite in this one. Auburn had a bye week. A lot of things went wrong for Auburn the last time they played two weekends ago on the road in Gainesville at Florida. A lot of turnovers. Bo Nix did not look good. He's a true freshman quarterback. You would expect a true freshman quarterback who has an offensive coach like Gus Malzahn to show some improvement in year one coming off of a bye week. I I would expect that anyway. I think Bo Nix will play better, obviously, than he did at Florida because Arkansas is just not nearly as good, especially defensively, as Florida is. And you can't underestimate the importance of a bye week to a first-year quarterback, that extra week of practice that they get. Auburn rests some guys up, obviously. I like Auburn in this spot here. 19 is a tricky number. Um, You know, Auburn's offense has looked awful at times this season and at times it's looked great uh they put up what 56 points on mississippi state of course that was at home and for the last few years sort of a well-known fact here auburn a much different team at home than they are on the road i'll be honest i considered taking arkansas in this game but the bye week is what is making me lean auburn here i just don't think auburn's offense is going to come out and look anything like it did against florida for the reasons i've already discussed I'm going to take the War Tigers here. Give me the Plainsmen and the Barners late at 19. LSU on the road to Mississippi State. Earlier in the season, this looked like this had the potential to be a pretty good game. Say, well, well LSU is going to be coming off that big game against Florida at home, and they got to turn around and go on the road to Mississippi State. Problem is, Mississippi State's just been a terrible team. Uh, more on that in a second. This one comes on 3:30 on CBS. LSU's an, uh, also a 19 point. Road favorites. You got Auburn and LSU here, both 19 point road favorites against division opponents here. You don't see that a whole lot um, in the SEC, especially in the SEC West, which has been the better of the two divisions most years over the last 10 years or so. LSU, of course, is 6 and 0. Big win over Florida last week. Mississippi State's 3 and 3. They got absolutely killed by Auburn, like I mentioned before. They lost to Tennessee last week and only scored 10 points. Uh, They lost earlier in the year by a couple of scores to Kansas State. They're just not a very good team. They've got some quarterback issues, and more importantly, I think they have some head coaching issues. I haven't been sold on Moorhead as, hair, as, head, as head coach at Mississippi State since they hired him. I caught a lot of flack in the comments section from some people um, about that. Uh, I just didn't think he was a good fit there, and it's starting to look like that may be the case. Um, I don't think anyone would be surprised if uh, maybe next year is his last year there. And if things go really bad this year, Maybe he gets out this year, although I wouldn't be willing to bet on that uh, right now. They're currently uh, they're currently 500, but it's going to be a struggle for Mississippi State to make a bowl game, I think, if you look at the remainder of their schedule. Uh, I just don't think Moorhead's working out there. But anyway, uh, I just think LSU is going to be too much offensively in this game for Mississippi State. Now, I know LSU's defense has not been elite, at least not to the level that we're used to seeing. The LSU defense, but again, I'll remind you, Mississippi State scored 10 points against um, Tennessee. So it's not like they have an explosive offense that's capable of taking advantage of any of LSU's defensive weaknesses. They're definitely not going to put up the amount of points I don't think that Florida did 
last week, maybe half of that. And I think LSU will score um, at least as many as they did against Florida. I'm going to take the road favorite again here. Give me LSU late in 19. Mizzou on the road at Vandy. And yeah, Vandy is just an absolutely horrible team. This one comes on four o'clock on the SEC network. Missouri is a 21 and a half point favorite in this one. They're five and one head scratch and lost to Wyoming. I don't know what team that was that showed up and lost to Wyoming in week one, but Missouri's looked like a totally different team since then, winning five in a row. Vandy, on the other hand, has just been absolutely pitiful this year. They just haven't been able to do anything, one in five, and listen to their losses. Georgia, 30 to six. Purdue, 42 to 24. LSU, 66 to 38. Ole Miss, 31 to six. And this past weekend, UNLV, 34 to 10. That's five losses. Of those five losses, only once have they lost by less than 21 and a half. It won't be this weekend, won't be the second time. I'm going to take Missouri again. I'm, I'm playing all the favorites here. I'm going to take Missouri again in the latest 21 and a half. Vandy has just been absolutely awful this year. Lost to Georgia by 24. Purdue, they lost by, what is this, uh, 18. Uh, LSU, they lost by 48, 58, 68, 28. Ole Miss, they lost by 25, and UNLV, they lost by 24. Mizzou's been on a roll. Kelly Bryant will eat this defense alive on the road at Vanderbilt. Missouri's probably going to be undefeated heading into that Georgia game coming up, in, or not undefeated, but just the one loss they had in week one heading into that Georgia game coming up in a few weeks. But I'm going to take the road favorite again here. This is four road favorites in a row. <laughs> All four of these teams aren't going to cover. I've just watched college football long enough to know all four of these teams aren't going to cover, but I can't figure out. I mean, which underdog would you play? You tell me. Maybe South Carolina. I, you know, if you're a believer there, Florida's injury, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to take Missouri again here late at 21 and a half. All right, Kentucky on the road at number 10, Georgia, 6 o'clock on ESPN. Kentucky, also disappointing this year at 3-3. Three and three. Worse than I thought they would be. I was higher on Kentucky than most people were heading into this season. They won 10 last year. I heard from people all off since, you know, oh, they're going to go back to four, five, six wins. I said, no, they'll win seven or eight. I was wrong. Those people were right. They're going to struggle to make a bowl game this year. Uh, they did win last week, but barely against Arkansas, 24 to 20. Uh, you know, just nothing really to get excited about at this point in the season. If you're Kentucky, Georgia's a 24 and a half point favorite in this one. They're five and one, of course, after that loss last week at home to South Carolina. Can Georgia rebound? Was last week some sort of a fluke for Georgia? Um, did South Carolina just play really good? Did Georgia just play really bad? It, it is whatever went wrong for Georgia, is it something that can be fixed? Well, um, we're going to find that out. Maybe not this week because Georgia's going to win this game, obviously. Um, but we'll find out down the road. But here's some numbers on Georgia. First of all, let's start with the defense. I have heard a few Georgia fans complaining about the Georgia defense. You need to stop. You're embarrassing yourself. Georgia's one of the best five defensive teams in America, and it's not even close. Georgia has a defense to compete for a national title, okay? Here's the number of touchdowns Georgia has given up this season against Power 5 opponents. Vandy, zero. Notre Dame, two. Tennessee, two. South Carolina, one. That's right. We gave up one Touchdown to South Carolina and lost. What does that tell you? The offense has got some serious issues. Now, I know South Carolina scored two touchdowns. If you didn't watch the game, one of them was a pick six. So, again, the defense gave up zero touchdowns to Vandy, two touchdowns to Notre Dame, two touchdowns to Tennessee, one touchdown to South Carolina. When you're giving up no more than two touchdowns per game, you're likely to win a lot of games. That's what Georgia's doing. Now, the offense. How many offensive touchdowns have we scored per game against these Power 5 opponents? Well, let's take a look. Uh, against Vandy, we scored three offensive touchdowns, zero in the second half. And the first team, the starters, played that entire game. We won 30-6. to six. Had some field goals in the second half, but not a single touchdown. So we scored a total of three touchdowns against Vandy. Vandy's 1-5 in five and one of the worst teams in America. Okay? Our next Power 5 game was Notre Dame. We won that game 23-20. to 20. We scored two, 23-17, to 17, I'm sorry. We scored two offensive touchdowns in that game against Notre Dame uh, and three field goals, okay? Tennessee, another terrible team. We did manage to score four offensive touchdowns in that game. Amazing. We scored five total touchdowns, but one was a pick six we took to the house, uh, so a defensive touchdown. So offensively, we scored four against Tennessee. And then, of course, this past week against South Carolina, we scored a grand total of two touchdowns. 
One of those two touchdowns coming in, of course, the last minute of the game where Georgia marched down the field with almost no time left on the clock in regulation, aided by, I believe it was three South Carolina penalties on that drive. And I think two of those three were on third downs. Might have been all three of those uh, penalties were on third downs. So even that second touchdown we scored against South Carolina was somewhat of a gift from South Carolina. What's the point here? Georgia's offense has not been good for the entire year, period. It's not something that just popped up against South Carolina this past week. Now, if you haven't paid that close of attention to Georgia um, and you just see some of the scores, maybe you don't feel that way, but you got to remember, yeah, we scored in the 40s and 50s or whatever it was, but that was against Arkansas State and Murray State. I don't even count those games for the purposes of trying to figure out how good or bad Georgia might uh, Georgia might be. I, it's just no point. And um, thinking about it now off the top of my head, I, I think Georgia is 3-3 three and three in their last six games against Power 5 opponents. Right. Uh, You know, we lost to Bama, lost to Texas, lost to South Carolina, beat Notre Dame, Vandy and Tennessee. So three and three in our last six games against power five opponents. Back to the defense real quick uh, here. I talked about the touchdowns we get. Listen to Georgia's defense in the second half this season against power five opponents has given up one touchdown. One, one. That was against Notre Dame late in the fourth quarter, okay? Against Tennessee, we gave up a grand total of zero points in the second half. Against Vandy, we gave up a grand total of zero points in the second half. Against South Carolina, we gave up a grand total of zero points in the second half. They obviously kicked a field goal in overtime, talking about just second halves here. So what's the point? Point is, Georgia's defense is absolutely elite. We haven't given up a rushing touchdown all season long. Just got done telling you we don't give up any points at all. We haven't given up more than two touchdowns in a game all season. Uh, and, and I know what you're going to say. You know, some of the teams we played aren't that good. That's fine. Find me some more. Georgia's the only team in America that hasn't given up a rushing touchdown, period. So do we have the worst schedule? Have we played all the worst? we played the six worst teams in America? No. Um, how many other teams haven't given up more than two touchdowns in a single game all year? Not very many. Look it up. You won't find very many. So the point is Georgia's defense is absolutely elite. The offense is miles away. Can Georgia's offense be fixed during the season? Was it just a bad game? Well, no. I just went through the numbers for the whole year against Power 5 opponents. So it's not just that Georgia's offense had a bad game. Now, they did have four turnovers, and that did hurt. Um, When you sit back and look at it in a rational way, uh, you know, separate emotion out of it and and the trash talk and all that, there aren't very many teams in America that could beat any team if they had four turnovers – and didn't get any turnovers. We turned the ball over four times. South Carolina didn't turn the ball over at all. A couple of our turnovers were in the red zone. One was in overtime. Um, So to even really be that close to have a chance to win the game, considering how bad the offense played overall, and we had four turnovers uh, and didn't get any, sort of tells you how good our defense played in that game to even keep us in that game to start with. Can Georgia's offense be fixed? Well, we can run the ball. Everyone knows that. And even against South Carolina, we ran the ball pretty well. Uh, DeAndre Swift went over 100. Currently for the season, we are uh, third in America in yards per rush. Okay, at, at uh, six, I think 6.19 yards per rush overall for the season. Uh, third in America. Oklahoma is ahead of us. Uh, and I can't remember who the other team is in terms of yards per rush. That's ahead of Georgia. It's the passing game, period. Now... <laughs> I I don't I can't remember where, but somewhere I've been hearing for like the last two years that Georgia had a pitiful passing game that it needed to work on. And a lot of people told me I was an idiot because we were busy beating terrible teams by 30 points a week by pushing them around and just running the ball. It's the passing game. The pass. and, And I don't know if that can be fixed during the season for a couple of reasons. Number one, our quarterback is who he is. Jake Fromm is a game manager. He's, he's the best game manager in all of college football, but he's a game manager. He's not going to win a game for Georgia. Uh, he's just not. Um, you know, uh, we can look at the, the stats, and most of you know this, but five times in Jake Fromm's career at Georgia, in two and a half years now, five times he's thrown the ball 30 times or more. He's 0 for 5 in those five games. Anytime we have rushed for less than four yards per carry in a game, Jake Fromm is winless. If our running game is not working at Georgia, 
There is no plan B offensively. Is that Jake Fromm's fault? Is that offensive philosophy fault? Is that uh, James Coley's fault or Cheney's fault? Is it Kirby Smart's fault uh, for being too conservative? Uh, too much of an old school, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust and play good defense type mindset. I don't know. But when you just look at the numbers, uh, if you want, if you're a Georgia fan or even not, just looking at Georgia and saying, how can Georgia improve from where they are to where they want to go? It's passing. We have an elite ground game. Uh, we have a national title worthy defense, but we can't throw the ball to save our life. And I refuse to believe that it's the wide receivers fault every single time you hear someone say, well, the wide receivers can't separate. The wide receivers can't beat um, man coverage. I'm not buying it. OK, Georgia does not have the worst group of wide receivers in America. OK, we've got uh, two five stars, a bunch of highly rated four stars out there playing wide receiver. It's not that none of them can beat man coverage. It's either bad play calling, bad scheming, bad philosophy. It's coaches not putting the players in position to be able to take advantage of mismatches. Um, it's Jake Fromm not being willing to throw the ball to someone unless there's no one within 15 yards of them. It's Jake Fromm's inability to throw the ball over the middle. Um, it's Jake Fromm's inability to move in the pocket and extend plays. These are my opinions, okay? But I, these are things I've been saying for two and a half years on here, and it's starting to rear its ugly head. I've heard some people blame the offensive line. I just told you we're third in America in yards per rush, okay? So there's no issue with Georgia's uh, offensive line run blocking. There's just not. Uh, I, I told you Swift went over 100 against South Carolina. Uh, rushing efficiency against South Carolina was sky high um, in terms of short yardage situations and, and gains of four yards or more on first down. I'm not going to get into how you calculate rushing efficiency, but Georgia's rushing efficiency was through the roof in that game. And the pass blocking, okay, we've given up four sacks all year, all year. One heading into the South Carolina game, three in the South Carolina game. And if you watch the South Carolina game, two of those three sacks were, you guessed it, Jake Fromm's fault where he held the ball for way too long, more than four and a half seconds. And that's according to Kirby Smart, not according to Uncle Lou. Watch Kirby Smart's press conference from yesterday. He was asked about the offensive line and the sacks, and he straight up blamed two to three sacks on Jake Fromm, saying he's got to get rid of the ball sooner. He was protected for four and a half seconds on both of those plays, which is more than the average and more than their goal in terms of what they look for to protect Fromm uh, and the amount of time they want to uh, have him decide where to throw. They say, you know, he's got to get rid of the ball quicker. He's got to tuck it and run. He's got to throw it out of bounds, whatever. But he blamed two to three on from. I tend to agree. So back to the original question, can Georgia's offense be fixed this season? No, it can't. I don't think it can. I, I think Georgia's going to have to do either what LSU did, bring in some kind of offensive guru to completely revamp the passing game style, scheme, and philosophy, or we're just going to have to wait till next year and see how Dewan Mathis uh, plays at quarterback. You know, Jake Fromm has been here two and a half years now. I don't hate Jake Fromm. I don't think he's a terrible quarterback. Like I said, I think he's the best game managing quarterback in college football. But the ability to walk up to the line of scrimmage, look at the defense, and change a running play from um, a handoff up the middle to the left, change that to a handoff up the middle to the right based on <laughs> what the defense is doing, that's not winning us any games. I'm, it's not. I'm sorry. You disagree. Call me a hater, say whatever you want. That's not winning us any games. You know what would be winning us some games? Not being one for eight in throws of 10 yards or more against South Carolina. Not having four turnovers against South Carolina. Uh, anyway, uh, with that being said, I can't take Georgia in this game. Um, I just can't. I don't trust the offense enough. Now, could Georgia's offense come out, run the ball 85% of the time, push Kentucky around, and win this game 45 to 10? Yeah, of course they could. And if they do that, all the Georgia fans will be laughing at me saying, see, I told you it was just a one week thing. Look, they look fine now. Are you really going to be impressed if Georgia comes out and runs the ball down Kentucky's throat? No, because we all know that's not going to work when you get to the games that matter later in the year. Without a grown up passing game, Georgia's season is over. Give me Kentucky and the 24 and a half points. All right, Texas A&M on the road at Ole Miss, 730 on the SEC Network. Texas A&M is a six and a half point favorite in this one. I'm going to take the home team Ole Miss. I've been really disappointed in Texas A&M this year. I, I mean, they had a brutal schedule, Clemson, um, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, LSU. I mean, the schedule is unbelievable. 
But even in the games not involving those teams, they just haven't looked very good this year, in my opinion. I, I, there's no way I can lay six and a half points with Texas A&M on the road. Do I think Ole Miss is an elite team? No, but they hung in with Vandy last week, made it a pretty good game for a while. Uh, it, Ole Miss is at home. I'm going to take the home team here. Give me the six and a half. All right, and then you got Tennessee on the road at number one, Alabama. Alabama's a 35-point favorite, 9 o'clock on ESPN. Mara had a concussion last week. They say he's going to play this week. Uh, again, with these coaching decisions to play these players, but I'm not going to get into that with Jerome Pruitt. If he wants to play the kid, play him. I'm of the opinion if somebody has a concussion, they probably should sit out a week, but what do I know? I'm just an idiot with a camera and a YouTube account. So go ahead and play Mar coming off a concussion last week against Mississippi State. Go ahead and play him against that Alabama defense. Go ahead. Uh, but they're a 35-point favorite. I I'm happy for Tennessee that they got a win, and more importantly, I'm happy for their fans, um, especially the ones that um, – that I've gotten to know pretty well, um, either in real life or through this channel. Um, you know, BVD, Catfish, those guys, uh, Hound Dog, the General, G White, all you, all you. I, 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 I don't want to try to name all the Tennessee fans because I, then I'll leave one out and that person will feel upset. But all the Tennessee fans who have been on this channel for years, I'm happy for Tennessee. That was a good win for Tennessee last week, and they they just needed that. They needed it for recruiting. They needed it for confidence. They needed it for. Um, I mean, I hate to say this, but just to sort of make themselves feel better. I, I, so I was happy to see Tennessee get that win. They're not winning this week on the road at Alabama. I'm not, I'm not trash talking Tennessee here. I'm going to take uh, Alabama in late of 35. I, I just think Alabama's going to eat Tennessee's secondary alive um, with those slant routes. And I mean, in, in defensively, like I said, Marr, I've been, uh, I do think he's looked like an improvement over Garantano, but he's coming off a concussion. Hey, this will be the best defense he's played outside of Georgia. And, and I mean, he had some success in the first half against Georgia. It was his first start or whatever, but second half, Georgia completely shut him down. I, I, I don't know how much success he can expect to have <clears throat> against this Alabama team. Um, I'm not rooting against Tennessee for any particular reason. I'm just going to go with the home team here in Alabama and ladies 35. This one comes on 9 o'clock at ESPN. That's a big deal. Why? Alabama finally gets a night game. Man, congratulations to Alabama for finally uh, having a game good enough for some TV network to decide to put on at 9 o'clock at night instead of noon or 11 a.m. This is amazing. You'll finally get to show off your Christmas lights display that you have at uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium there, the, the red light thing that you copied from the University of Georgia <coughs> uh, that we showed off three or four weeks ago against Notre Dame. But per usual, Alabama a month behind. But congratulations. And the students may stay for this game. They'll be there on time. It's a 9 o'clock game instead of 11 a.m. Nick Saban is happy. The president is happy. The AD is uh, happy. Uh, all those things combined should lead to about a 45-point win for Alabama in this game. Give me the gumps. Lay to 35. All right, that's it for the SEC preview. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up. Share this video somewhere. Uh, if you don't mind, that would really help me out. All right, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you tonight at 10 o'clock for the live show. Have a good morning.